Hello everyone, I'm Abdullah Samia. I'm going to be reacting to the video of Autumn Sharif speaking about how she's Somali and she's also not Muslim. And everybody just had this stance of don't question it. Don't question this. Your faith is weak and you need to repair that faith. So connect with God and read the Quran and pray and, and I tried so many times. Now, Autumn Sharif is a singer and songwriter. She has some songs on here um, where she's singing different covers of different artists. She uploaded a video called I'm Somali and not Muslim. So let's check it out. I know what you're thinking. She wants to leave Islam so that she can sin, so that she can become a famous singer and she can do all these things that are forbidden in Islam. Well, it didn't stop DJ Khaled. DJ Khaled is a Muslim and he's still a famous singer and he was able to do all of these things. So c clearly there's more to it than just whether she wants to be famous or not. Obviously, this is a type of decision that can actually hurt one's career by potentially offending your fans and your business partners or other people in your life. This isn't an easy decision. This isn't something that someone takes lightheartedly. This is something that's difficult to do. And when someone does it, they're doing it fully knowing of the consequences. They're doing it with the full understanding that they are going to be upsetting people. They are going to be shunned for this decision. Yet she wanted to live authentically. She wanted to be herself. Let's see what she has to say. So, before I start, I just want to make a disclaimer that I respect everybody from every religion. Um, do you live your life the way you want to live it? And, and that's really my point here. I grew up in a Somali household. Um, and I'm sure some of you might know if you're Somali yourself or if you come from a similar background. Somalia is considered to be a 100% Muslim country and the people are supposed to follow this faith. So in my experience, Somalis are some of the most religious people I've met and I'm not generalizing, but this is just my experience. Uh, they also tend to be Salafi, which is kind of more of the hard line interpretation uh, in terms of religious rulings like no music, uh, even though you do find that among non-Salafis as well. But this was my experience among with uh, Somalis. As she said, the hundred, almost 100% Muslims. Um, but nonetheless, I always questioned Islam since I was a little kid. I asked so many questions. I was always the one, that little child, who would ask my mom or my ma'alin, which is like the Islamic teacher, um, we would go to Islamic school during the weekends and I would always ask why um, you know things like if somebody is a good person and they don't belong to the Islamic faith why should they deserve hell as a punishment for not adopting this ideology um, shouldn't it be more important in being a good person and and I just had so many questions and I was seen as um, trouble um, everybody had to keep an extra eye on me. I, I, I remember um, having to then pretend that I wasn't curious and, and, and deny my comprehension. And so I did, because of course this is what I grew up around and, and I really wanted so badly in my life to believe. You know, I had my episodes when I was 15. I, I try to take it very seriously because I want to make sense of this world and I want to understand why we're here. And so I doubted even my own beliefs, my, my instinctual beliefs, and tried my best to adopt Islam. And to be honest with you, I really felt like I had no choice anyway. It was very taboo, it was very... Um, <laughs> it just it doesn't exist. It, in my eyes and in, in my experience, it didn't exist to have a Somali person not be a Muslim. So 
This is something that many Muslims have said in the past as well, that they just didn't know that you could actually be a Muslim and actually doubt Islam. It's, um, it's because the, the religion is enforced as a sort of group think where everybody is kind of made to believe so that people that don't believe that that idea is not even, it doesn't even come about. The questioning, is, it's not obviously not welcomed in some cases. Some families are better at this, but obviously the, the common experience is that questioning is a bad thing. Um, and people that, that question, usually they're kind of told you just have to believe or you have to trust in God. Um, and so Autumn was someone that had a very you know, curious mindset, someone that was looking for answers, trying to make sense out of things. Uh, she had doubts because things weren't adding up in her mind. And so this is a very naturally curious person. And of course, a curious person is not satisfied with answers that are just like, you just have to believe, or it's just this way, or God knows best. Those two do dots don't, like, they connect. And um, it's just assumed. And I tried my best. I would cry. I would cry so hard some nights because I genuinely didn't believe in this faith and felt like I was destined for hell because of it. I punished myself. I, was, I felt guilty. This is um, one of the more dark sides of religion. When people say that, Religion is something that people depend on, something that allows people to cope with life, but also causes a lot of pain and anguish and confusion, right? When you, when you start to find that things are not adding up, and you start to find that you can't choose whether you believe or not, you just don't believe, you just, things just don't make sense to you. And what happens? Guilt and pain and sadness, all of these things come out because you're, what you're being told and what you're being taught doesn't add up with what you're finding in the world, right? I went to the mosque, I went to go clean the mosque in the, um, in, my, in the weekends, after school, just to feel good about myself, just to feel enlightened. I would, I would talk to my cousins and everybody just had this stance of don't question it. Don't question this. Your faith is weak and you need to repair that faith. So connect with God and read the Quran and pray. And, and I tried so many times, so many times. I pre it's just it's so important people know this, that people don't tend to just leave religion just like that. There's often a long period of trying to make sense of it, especially people that see the problems in religion, right? If you're, if you're not really practicing or you don't really care about it or it's not a big part of your families your, or, your, or your culture where you're living, then you sometimes don't care because religion is there for Fridays or for Saturdays, right? You go to the mosque. But like when you're surrounded by religious people and a religious community, like you want to be part of it. You want to fit in, right? And you try, you often try so hard to make sense out of it. Pretended for so long and and this is not to say that religion is wrong or Islam is wrong. I just don't believe that there is one ideology or one school of thought. Religion helps a lot of us to make sense of this world and we love that routine and we love that guidance. Uh, in fact, I love guidance, but I, I, I seek it from elsewhere. I seek it from the experiences of others. I seek it from life. I seek it from experimenting and, and, and educating myself with every, every faith. So she's saying here, she's kind of um, trying not to be too aggressive and not being too harsh to people that are Muslim that are watching this. And, you know, she's not saying your religion is garbage and I hate your religion, but she's saying that there's wisdom and, you know, in all religions, right? And we can find good and bad pieces. Well, she said good in, in, in every, every way of life, right? And which is true. There is good that you can find in different religions and different worldviews. Once we're able to acknowledge that these are not from God, 
and these are all human endeavors, we can pick and choose what makes sense and what's best for us, right? And what I find is best is secular humanism, is putting humanity first, right? To Christianity, to spirituality, uh, um, spirituality that isn't attached to one thing, um, Judaism, uh, uh, you name it. I wanted that freedom to not follow something that didn't make sense to me and still doesn't and that's okay it should be okay why shouldn't it be okay i used to wear the hijab um all throughout my childhood and teenage years and one of the first acts of rebellion for me was to uh, and i say rebellion but I, 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 I truly believe that I'm not a rebellious person. I just wanted the option. I didn't want it decided for me to wear the hijab, so I took it off and it was a challenge. I'm sure many Muslim women who don't wear the hijab right now can relate, you know, if, especially when it's expected of them. Um, you'd be lucky to have, you know, the lenient do whatever don't wear it parents and they exist and they're amazing um, and uh, I was one of those lucky I mean I didn't have to wear hijab but I had those lenient uh, lenient not just parents but but my whole extended family is quite liberal and I'm really thankful for that and like she said you feel if you're in one of those families you're lucky because they accept you for who you are right they they allow you to be authentic they allow you to be yourself mm -hmm. But it's been a long journey and I just don't care enough now to pretend. I think it's pretty obvious a lot of people, they, you know, they, they ask me and they're, they're curious. And I was triggered once actually, not long ago, because for a long time, I, whenever I would meet somebody in the street or whatever have you, I would tell them I'm not a Muslim and they'd be like, really? Um, different types of reactions um, some are like oh my god me too and there are so many so many people that I've met who say me too um, when it comes to how I feel about not being not belonging to Islam this is so true there are so many people who are actually in between Islam and not Islam or they're just culturally Muslim I hear this over and over and over again. There is a huge tsunami coming of apostates, people that are only, you know, very loosely tied to the Islamic dogma. And um, I don't even want to say that I left Islam. Because I feel like I, I never was a Muslim. Um, but I was triggered because this one time I went... So I think... Again, she's trying to kind of not be as aggressive and saying that I'm here and I'm leaving your religion. So she's trying to water it down and saying that, well, I never really was a Muslim, which is something that some, some Muslims will use against her and say, oh, you were never a Muslim. But like, if you look at what she said right, for the last 10 minutes, she told you, she told us how hard she tried to believe in this thing how difficult it was, how she tried to submit, how she used to clean the mosque, how she wanted to be a believer, but it just she just couldn't make it make sense. So these are all this all shows that she was sincere in trying to be a Muslim. It just couldn't it didn't work out for her. Back to my old community. Um, I was doing some work with um, the youth club there and I came across someone I grew up with, um, an older an older man who um, knew me from childhood and he asked me and I out of I, I guess fear told him that I was and it really bothered me when I left that building and I was traveling home and I thought for fuck's sake I'm not going to pretend for who for what Why is it so hard to believe, you know, that a person can think for themselves?
I did all my research, trust me. I read the Quran, the translation, I read the Hadith. Um, I could never complete the whole thing just because there was so much that I felt was, um, I just didn't agree with personally. Um, but I tried, I watched all the videos. I adopted every, uh, it, I adopted Islam and embraced it in so many ways. But I came to terms with it. And till this day, there are not, there's, there's hardly any person that I know that, you know, can say it out publicly. There's only one other person I know that has been very public and everybody else is still like simmering like me. And, um, it, and I just don't care to play in this anymore and especially knowing that there are so many of us out there we got a break we got to break this chain of fear we don't need to justify ourselves it should be just a human a human right it should just be normal before you assume what I am ask me let's talk about it I don't assume why you are. I would never dare ask somebody why they wear the hijab, why they follow religion. We can have a discussion about it. You know, sometimes it's nice to have a debate and sometimes it's nice to just learn from each other and, and, and speak on our experiences. But I am a Somali woman, young woman and i'm not a muslim so so that's the end of it and um yeah what a video if you'd like to um check out autumn's channel autumn sharif i'll put a link down below and her video i'm somali and not muslim is there as well if you'd like to give some support um to her in coming out as an ex-muslim like she said, we all have to stick together. We need to, we need to normalize dissent. We need to make this something that anyone can do, a like human right. It shouldn't be, why don't you believe or why do you believe, unless it's for dialogue, but it shouldn't be an accusation to someone like, why don't you believe, right? We need to, we need to get into this together. We need to take care of each other. And so uh, do check out her channel as well and um, subscribe if you like. And uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I think we have a bright future ahead of us. So stay tuned. If you're new to this channel, please do. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel as well. Details are below on uh, my blog. And uh, you can check out my, my articles on why I'm not a Muslim, why I don't believe in Islam. Thank you very much. This is Abdullah Samir signing out.